Hi, everyone. We'll start in about two minutes. If everyone would just be sure to mute their mics, that would be helpful. We want to make sure that you can unmute it when you need to ask questions, that's for sure. But we just want to make sure people know to mute their mics. Steve Walden, are you out there? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Let me know when the screen is loaded. It's having a little it's difficulty. Up. It's up. Oh, it is. Okay, thank you. It does say loading, so you can see the screen just fine, right? Yeah, there's a little bit of breaking up or feedback on your on your mic there. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us, all of the managers out there. We appreciate it. Just a bit, just a note, if you would go ahead and be sure you're muted. And then unmute if you have a question. We want to make sure that this is interactive as much as possible. We appreciate your questions. We are presenting a new PowerPoint. It's been updated since we made the change on how to enter the time from in and out times to hours. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the PowerPoint. And then, Decora, are you on and ready to roll for a live demo as needed? I sure am. Thank you. And, Mark, are you with us to help out with the messages that we get from the folks. No, but I can help out, Gina. Okay, thank you. That was you, Jen, right? <laughs> yes. It is. Okay, thank you. So we'll hey, Gina, I'm available too. Okay, thanks. 
So get, getting started, I'm assuming all managers have registered. If you have not registered, be sure to talk to your, your manager and get assistance as soon as possible and get, and get registered. That's the first step. So we'll assume you're registered. And the home page, again, just looks like this. Where do you find ADP? The login is workforcenow.adp.com. If you're already registered, you just enter your user ID and your password and log in. Hey, Gina? Yes? We, we seem to be stuck. All I see is your Skype for Business screen, um, the little box. We don't see the presentation yet. Same here. Same here, correct. I see nothing on the screen. Likewise. Likewise for me, too. Okay, I'm going to start presenting again. Hopefully that works. Steve, just let me know if it's loaded and you see the first page of the quick start guide. Yeah, it's coming up now. Okay, starting again. Wait, it's not fully loaded yet. Nope. Okay. Black screen. There must be some kind of connection problem on your end, Gina. It's really slow coming up. Oh, we lost it. Oh, okay. Let's see. I'll start, try it again here. So, Cora, do you want to try to present and get on the live demo, perhaps, while I'm trying to get this turned over? Yeah, I could do that. Okay. Okay, does everybody see my screen? You're up. Okay, great. Yep. So I'm actually going to start at the home page. And I'm just going to show you from the home page and how you could actually get to time and attendance. I know we've already gone through this, but I'm going to quickly just go through some simple um, shortcuts and everything. But you could actually just go to an individual time card by scrolling down to your common time and attendance tasks and clicking individual time card. Or you could go to, in your guys' case, it would say My Team. Click on My Team, scroll down to Time and Attendance, and then Individual Time Card. It will bring you straight to Time and Attendance. Um, the employee's name is going to be off to the left-hand side. You could search your employee by clicking the um, magnifying glass and filtering or selecting what list. And I know that there's a lot of questions on, you know, oh, I, I could see this employee and this employee is terminated or I can't see this employee. Always make sure you select the status as active. And then you could also search, you, you'll see all of your employees down in this list area. I actually end up seeing everybody, but you will see who reports to you in this list area where you can actually search for their name. And type in their name and then just click on their name and it'll bring you to their time card. Also, you could toggle back and forth 
um, through your employees. If you have, you know, five employees and your um, that reports to you, you only have one through five, but you'll be able to toggle through. Um, this is a main time card. There's different tabs that go across, which is the total, the schedules, and the time off balances. Always make sure you guys are in the current um, pay period week or um, depending on what time of week it is, it might be the next pay period. So pay attention to the dates right here that are defaulted when you select your current or your next pay period. So just pay attention to those dates. This is where you approve your time card. After you enter in your time daily, you could just hit approve time card and it will prove what you entered for that day. Um, I'm just going to go through on how to enter time. Just remember with your pay code, you do not have to enter regular or overtime hours. Those are automatically calculated. The only time that you will select a pay code is if it applies to any of these types of pay, bereavement, jury duty, FMLA, premium pay. Um, PTO. So any of these is when you will actually go in and change the pay code. Otherwise, just let it default to the regular overtime hours. Type in how many hours um, an employee works. If um, if they work five hours, type in five. Select the correct store. Everybody has a default primary store, but if you would like to select um, a different store, just Hit the magnifying glass and a whole list will come up where you could scroll through or you could even search up here. Um, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and search. You could search that way or you could sim simply just type it in. Oops, I'm sorry. Just type it in that way. Go ahead and select the store right now. Make sure you always have a project. If you don't have a project in and you try to save, um, it won't let you save. An error code exception will come up. So select the correct project. And then you could go ahead and hit save on the bottom. And then this just this little um, this little sign just said that it needs supervisor approval. This is just indicating that um, your regular hours are calculated up to the side. Once you get through the whole week, some hours might move into overtime. And then if you use the unpaid um, time off code, or if there's any non-work hours, it will total up under this non-work hour. So we'll go ahead and just do an example of that, just so you guys can see how that works. I'm going to just enter in hours just to fill it up for the week. Make sure when you enter hours, you guys are separating it um, per total project per day. I'm just going to go in here and enter this in just to give you guys a general idea. As you can see off to the side, um, it will calculate all the regular hours going down. And then there's also overtime hours off to the side right here. And you could go to the totals tab and then just take a look at that too. It summarizes it for you. Um, let's see what else. And then, um, just make sure you always save, and then this pay period, it, it actually shows how many total hours you have, and then pay week will always stay at one. Um, if we go to this preference box right here and click on it, you could actually change how many rows you want for the day. 
Right now I have it set at three, but if I want to have it go down to one, I can go ahead and select that. And then that one will show up for all of my time cards or if I want to select it to even 12. 12 rows will select for each day for each one of my time cards. Um, this legend key right here is just um, a key on what these error codes actually stand for. You could actually hover over them as well and just uh, read the what the codes mean. Or if you have any questions, just go to this um, legend and it will explain it to you. Oh, let's see. You could also add um, you could also add additional lines by clicking on this box right here. You could add blank rows, copy a row, delete rows, and then you could also add notes as well. To add a note, just click on add a note. Um, I know for any for bereavement, when you guys select the type of bereavement pay, just make sure that you guys um, add a note on the relation of that of um, the relation to your employee that took the bereavement. And a note will also need to be added when you guys do premium pay. We could do an example of that actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select the pay code bereavement. Employee was out for eight hours that day on bereavement. The project would be manager only tab and that actually applies to, I'm just gonna show you guys. Oops. That applies to bereavement, jury duty, leave, workers' comp. And then you just have to go in here and add a note. And then you could say, um, can't. Victoria, the screen went black. Oh. Did it? Do you see my screen still? I can still see it. Yeah, I still see it. I see it. Me too. Okay, it might be your setting. So I'm going to go ahead and just continue. Um, so you select the project manager only. And then just make sure you save after you put in that note. And then you could hover over the note and you could see um, when you entered it, timestamp and everything in the relation. Shakira, are we putting lunches in? Um, that's a good question. We are not putting lunches in. Right now, we are going to do exactly what we do in um, Oasis, what you guys do on a weekly basis in Oasis. We're going to do it in a daily basis. Okay, so we're just going to be putting in the personal downtime and the project work that they do. You got it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to show an example now on how to do premium pay. Um, right now in Oasis, you guys, when you guys enter premium pay, um, um, when premium pay is entered, you actually are entering um, the premium pay plus regular hours to coincide with it. In ADP, all you have to do is just enter the premium pay. So you select the pay code, which is $2 premium. Make sure you enter a note on the reasoning for that pay. So, um, and for a shift, save the note. Select how many hours they worked on that premium pay. Ensure the store is correct and then select the project. And you could just go ahead and save it. Mm 
And then you could hover over the note and see the note and everything. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, go ahead. Um, again, after we're done inputting this in, um, you said hit save, which we do that now. You also said hit approve time card. Once you hit approve time card, is that pretty much going to, we can't change it after that time? You could make changes after you approve your time card. You would just so have to. Is it, is it save and approve time card the same thing? Nope, you want to save it. You want to save this time card. And right. after everything's saved, you'll go ahead, you could, and everything's accurate, you could approve your time card by clicking on the approve. So you're just approving that particular day, right? Exactly. Okay. Yep. And even after approval, you could actually go back and make changes if you'd like, but you would just have to re approve your changes that you make. Save and then re approve, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That was a good question, Jim. Is there any other questions or is there anything you guys would like to see? Yeah, Gina, this is Russ. I have a question. Hi, Russell. Um, as far as the time, the lines on uh, each individual day, does it matter if there's any left blank or not? No, or it does not matter. Okay. Um, as far as approving the time cards, like uh, that other gentleman just mentioned, um, we should be doing that daily, or should we be waiting till the end of the week to approve those? Um, I personally recommend that you approve them um, after you enter them in daily, the next morning if you're entering them in or at the end of your shift. Okay. Now, when it comes to the end of the week, will there be a different process as far as what we have to do uh, in approving the time cards or putting them into the, uh, doing a payroll type thing, or will that be done automatically because all the time cards have been approved already? Um, that is actually a good question, and I could actually show you um, what you could do at the end of the week after all your time is entered to view all of your team's cards at once. Um, you could actually go into your team, time and attendance, and you could group your time cards, and um, that will select all of your employees and then um, list, um, or and it would actually show or it would it will show all of your employees and then you could actually um, see the employees that have time cards that were not approved or um, what I actually recommend is going into your team time and attendance and time card exceptions and then this you will actually see your employees um, off to the side and any time card exceptions that you may have where you could click on the time card exceptions right here or you could click on their name in the blue and it will bring you up to their time card and do this one for now and then it will actually show it will tell you what exception you have and this time here overlaps and then you could go ahead and get that corrected and fixed, save it, approve your time card, and then just go back to your time card exceptions. And then once all your time card exceptions have been um, corrected, you could go to the supervisor approval required and click on this bottom um, total number and it will actually bring you to all of your time cards that still needs to be approved. Okay, so if if all the time cards, we've done it daily, we have no exceptions, and everything's been approved, is there something that we have to do, like we normally do now on, on Sunday or Monday, whatever, to, to do payroll? Is there something else that we have to do as far as completing and approving, or is it basically done at that point? Oh, it's basically done. If you approved all your time cards and there's no exceptions, you are good to go. Okay. 
Uh, I had another question in regards to paid time off. Um, the employees individually can request paid time off on ADP, correct? Yes, that is correct. Once we turn on um, that feature, they'll be able to request PTO. Oh, so it's not live yet? That is correct, yes. I'm hoping to get it live. I'll send out an email. Um, once it's activated, I'll send out an email to let everyone know that um, that feature is activated. Okay. Uh, can you show us how to do that? Because I got on there and tried to look for myself to see if I could find a way to request paid time off, and I could not navigate it. Yeah. Um, I will actually send out a guide with that email. Okay. Um, it's, since it's not live right now, it's hard for me to show. So I will send out a guide um, with that email once everything's activated. Okay. With, with, until it's activated, if I have an employee, like this week I have an employee who's taking a day off, they were, you know, requesting paid time off. It, until it's activated, um, all you have to do when you enter in their time is select the pay type to uh, P, to PTO. So let me go back to a time card. Hey, Sakura. Um, while you're doing that, Steve, do you want to try to get the presentation up so we can go through things again? Yeah, I can pull it up and, and go through it. Just let me know when and secure and I can trade views here. Okay. I can, I mean, if I see it on your screen, Steve, I can talk through it, um, but I can't, I'm having trouble on my laptop, but if once I see it, I can talk through it, you know? Yep, no problem. So, Sakura, just to reiterate, the PTO, the reason it's not loaded is because we have things that we need to transfer after this OASIS payroll has been processed. So you're in the middle of transferring any PTO balance, any deductions, anything like that right now. Yes. So then, and that's through January 28th. And mm -hmm. then as of January 29th, as of tomorrow, probably tomorrow, people will see their PTO balances, their actual accrued or earned balances, mm -hmm. and then they'll have to enter PTO for the week. So yeah. January 29th through February 4th, they'll need to enter their own PTO, right? And, and just select the pay code to PTO. And then the process... You'll yep. go ahead and email people when you're ready, right, Sakura? Yes, I'll send out an email to everybody and let you know when that's available. Sakura, I have a question. Okay, Jamie. When uh, with the temps, do we enter their hours daily? Um, yes, you will be entering their hours daily. Okay, thank you. Secure, uh, I have another question. Okay, Jim. Um, this might have been answered before. I didn't hear it. When somebody goes on BTO for 40 hours, is a 40-hour full-time employee, can it just go up in the, on the Sunday 40 hours, or is that not possible? Is no, it, unfortunately, it's not possible. Um, eight hours on for five, five days? Is that what yep. you Yep. You got it, Jim. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Okay, Brandon. If uh, if an employee calls in on their day that they're supposed to be scheduled to work, would you put that under UTO and put in the eight hours and then just add to know the reason why it was UTO? Yeah. It's, they're all the same. I just need a three page. Oh, sure. Okay. Thank you. So the question was, if um, an employee calls in, you want to track that the employee called off, so you would enter in um, UTO as a pay code. 
and then the project would be manager only, just to track it with a note of um, them calling off. Is that your question? Yes. Yes. I have a question. Okay, Russell. Yeah, I kind of got cut off. The, the, it disconnected me. Um, I was talking about uh, paid time off um, because I have an employee. I know it's not active yet, but I have an employee who's taking a day off this week. I can just I can enter their time in on their time card, correct? Yes, you can. Just um, just ensure that you are selecting the pay code PTO. And then the project that goes with that pay code is manager only. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's turn it over to Steve and let him get his, the PowerPoint up because there's a lot of things on the time card and we can probably move through that. Okay. Sounds good. So, Steve Walden, are you ready to put that presentation up? We can move yeah, through some of the so examples. Secure just. Uh, uh, turn off presentation, I'll present. Thank you. Yep. All right, do we see it, folks? You're up. It's Steve. loading. I see it. I'm seeing it now. All right, Gene, are you going to try to walk through it, or you want me okay, to? Okay, I think we can pass. You know, go through this. Everyone's registered. We'll go through each screen real quick here, Steve. Just as a reminder, right? We can go to the next one. And then the home page, everyone knows this is the login page, WorkforceNow, AP.com, our home page. You will receive this page is really important. Instead of communicating with a million emails, things communicated on the home page for, for going forward. So your home page is really important. As you can see on the red arrow at the bottom of this screen, it says this is your home page and we HR will communicate to um, employees and managers on this home page important facts. So that's how we we'll communicate more. So if you have questions, be sure you read that. If you have suggestions, email us. We can put things on that home page, make it easy. Next. You can move to the next one, Steve. Unless you had more you wanted to say. Should be on the timesheet now, Gina. Oh, okay. The timesheet. So after we made this change, we received feedback from managers, and the decision was made made to go back to the original timesheet for the employee. And as you can see, you you would want to put in as you're doing now their actual start time and end time. Gina, are you there? It looks like Gina got disconnected. Uh, you hear me I okay? There she I just, is. I just got kicked out. Now I'm back in. I don't know what's going on. So I don't know. Gina. Um, so hey, Gina. Gonna, uh, Gina. Yes, Steve. You're, yes. you're still breaking up quite a bit. How about I walk through it and then you can just throw in if you think there's something I'm missing. Right. Because you're breaking up you can, pretty bad. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. It's a part of me. Okay. So we took the uh, the previous timesheet that we had been using for the switch over to ADP, and this is the new timesheet for each employee, and it's for the week. Uh, we have, um, I mean, it's pretty pretty simple, and most of you should have been using it anyhow. The only thing we added was a column for store number if it's different than the primary store that we're logging things in at. Uh, there's a note here about breaks and the unpaid lunch period. You're entering lunch here, but you're subtracting that from the, the total day. So we're just showing hours worked. 
employee signature man manager signature we've updated the headers across here to match with the the changes that uh, are reflected in ADP as well as MV for um, some of the projects and then you will use this form to transfer the hours into ADP you'll just be using this information here basically the project hours and ensuring that the total hours match as you put that in ADP. Anything else there, Gina? I don't have anything else to add. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Any questions on this timesheet? For uh, Steve, is this is this available to pull up and print? Uh, it if it isn't now, it will be uh, very shortly. So it's being okay. being loaded now. Will it be loaded to MV or is that where we'll get it from? MV and ADP both. Okay, great, thanks. Okay. And then there's a spot here for if there's a, a project code that's not called out here, there's a couple ones that aren't used by all stores. If you have that and you need to put it in here, that's why we left a blank column. So uh, here is uh, some stores will have a lot of ADECO employees and for the ADECO time card you will be you'll just have one time card for ADECO and you'll need to combine hours so this form was created so you could take the timesheet that's being used for each ADECO employee and add add the information on here so you could get a total for the day some stores don't need you get two to a deco or less and it's not that hard to, to combine your hours but for some stores uh, uh, this will be useful and this will be posted as well and we'll talk about as we go through the uh, presentation we'll talk about the deco time recording a little bit more this is here I'm, yeah go ahead i'm just wondering on the uh, two timesheets there um, sometimes we have uh, team members that will go to more than one store in a day. Do they want to make two slots for those stores next to the day? So, yeah, on a on a day, you might they might go to more than one store. So, um, in, in that regard, I, I would just you know ask you as the manager, you manage that, so you could you could you know you could actually take and in this in this slide here for store number you could just write in more than one store so you're recording that appropriately or you could have a second timesheet for that particular employee so you've got one timesheet for uh, one store and the time there and the second time sheet for the second store would that work for you yeah we, we've done it before it gets a little messy trying to divide things up there but uh, we we've made it work we'll make it work again I don't know if they had a, a column for that on the uh, deco one uh, for the um, different stores than the primary no there is there is not so um, Steve yeah and this is Stephen master um last night we had project service team that did several different stores and it was under my understanding through my market manager that they're supposed to put timesheets, uh, the ADECO employees or whoever's going to that store is supposed to put timesheets in that store's uh, folder, and that manager is supposed to enter those under their temp uh, store number. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that would be the recommendation for, you know, not for a survey employee because only – that store has their time card, but for an ADECO employee, again, we're tracking ADECO hours at your store, and if it's ADECO hours, you know, whether it's John Smith that was at three stores, you know, those, those hours were spent at each of those three individual stores, and that time would be recorded at those individual stores. That makes sense? Yeah, you know, I thought that's uh, what the previous question kind of was referring to, um, but I guess it's two different situations for a deco and serve you. Yes, yeah, yeah, I probably misunderstood the other question, but but Stephen's right. You just you you track the hours at for a deco. You track the hours that the store was in. Uh, this here will be on um, one of the forms. You know, at, we had a. Um, uh, reporting time rules on, on the uh, 
that was in the Excel spreadsheet with the old uh, timesheet uh, that's been updated. Uh, isn't going to be anything surprising to anyone. It's just help to give you guidelines around reporting time, and just a call out to uh, that you know if you if you are entering time from an M plan, that that M time should that M plan should be giving you uh, final directions where that particular project or task should be assigned in payroll. But you'll see this on that uh, Excel spreadsheet. And then here, this is just kind of a breakout. Um, it get, it's a little messy. We want to be able to make sure you you saw it. Additional guidelines for the timesheet. We you know we, we called that out uh, before that um, we're logging in time in time out for the day. That the 30 minute break period for lunch is unpaid. Logged on the sheet but not included. And the 15 minute breaks are personal downtime. And we have total hours and signatures. And then this is just showing the different pay codes in ADP. It has doesn't really. Uh, isn't on your uh, on your handwritten timesheet, but these are codes that will be in ADP when. And you saw Sakura walk through that a little bit, but these are the pay codes, and then these are the project codes. Again, some of the descriptions are revised for this year versus what we had last year for project codes. And then we're back on ADP. Any questions on? Uh, on the handwritten timesheets, they'll all come together as, as we kind of go through the presentation, but anything we need to answer before we move on? Steve, Gina, can, you hear, can you hear me okay? I can. So, you know, before we had employee timesheet, and then some of the store managers would complete, the employees complete the employee timesheet. And then that timesheet, some of the market managers would say, now put it on that payroll tracking form, or the store managers would send it to the market managers. That's still really up to market managers, right? We're, we are, what we need from the stores are, this is this really, this employee timesheet needs to be completed by every employee and a DECO employee. So if a market manager says, now put it on that payroll tracking form, which is, you know, their next step, that's up to them. That's the question we keep getting. Did any market managers want to weigh in on that? So store managers, employee timesheet, the store managers are doing what with that? Are they giving it to market managers? Or are you, is there any direction on that? Because we, before we had the timesheet and the payroll tracking form. Hi Gina, this is Don. Um, I currently, I told my staff that we do not need to do the tracking form. It's just kind of redundant. Um, I can get that information from ADP reports once we get through this. Um, I guess that would be up to the market manager. I personally don't want them spending the time on that. Right. That's what we have been saying. But So really, market managers can be prescriptive and, t and ask the store managers to do what they want. But we're saying uh, employee timesheet completed and then the manager enter it in ADP. That's all from HR. That's all we're saying needs to be done. Um, with the exception of ADECO, ADECO employees have to be transferred over to the market manager so they can send that information over to the ADECO contact to, to process ADECO employees. So right? again, again, Jerry, that would be what you want to say to your store managers on that, right? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Gina. Yes. Um, I do understand it looks like there there's going to be access to running reports on this, and that's where I would use uh, a report in OTK that would essentially be a, uh, a tracking form so I could see the grand totals of everything. I'm assuming we'll have that same type of access as market managers so that before we approve, if we want to look at things at a high-level view, we'll be able to do that? Yes. Okay. I know it's a little ahead of everything, but I'm assuming that functionality is there. So thank you. You're welcome. Shall we move on? Yes. Okay. So this is individual time card navigation. So again, uh, we're a little bit uh, easier now and cleaner now. We're not uh, 
than we originally were starting out with ADP. We're not entering in uh, clock in, clock out. So, um, and Secure went through this a little bit, you pay period uh, entering, uh, um, <laughs> pay period dates, uh, two ways to move uh, to a different time card. You can click on employee search or click on uh, these arrows here. I'm going to take you back and forth. Um, the tabs, uh, we will not be using a scheduled tab. The rest of it uh, will provide the information that it describes. Again, time cards where it will be most of the time. And then just always save your time card. Uh, then additionally, Secure talked about the preferences. You can adjust the number of rows per day that you have. The default originally is one row, but once you change it, it will default to whatever you change it to. Um, so as she said, you can go through uh, 1 through 12. Uh, alternately, you can manage rows by clicking on this menu bar over here, and you can add a blank row. You can delete a row. Uh, you can uh, navigate through that. Here, when you click on the employee search uh, bar right here, it brings up this pop-up box. And uh, as, uh, as Sakura mentioned, status is active is where you want to be most of the time. If you're a market manager, you want to make sure that you include, uh, you click on include indirect reports. That will give you everyone that's underneath you. If you don't click that, then all you're going to see is your direct staff. Um, but you can select a specific time card from there. And uh, R, again, you can click this arrow to move over to uh, another time card. And here, uh, you know, it's real simple when we're entering pay. The pay code is left blank unless it's an exception, such as uh, paid time off. You're ending hours. You're ending your store number. Uh, it, it comes up as default when you're in there, but you can change that store number to any of the stores. Uh, you can scroll, when you click on it, you scroll to select it, or if you just type M0 and the three-digit store number, it will pull that number up for you. And then uh, project box, you click in here to sign the project code. And that's primarily, that's all you're entering. Again, you want to make sure you're on the, uh, the correct pay time period. And, and just to call out, Regular and overtime hours are automatically calculated for you. you. You don't, that has nothing to do with the pay code. The pay code are those exceptions, you know, personal time off, jury duty, that type of thing. And here's an example of pay codes. When you click in uh, the pay code box, then you'll get this pop up and you can select the appropriate pay code if it is different than regular or overtime. And then project, if you click on that, you'll get this pop-up box, which will give you the projects to click on. If you click on more, we'll see that in the next slide, then it will expand the project list because it's more than what can be seen on this page. And again, the entry must be made for project, otherwise you will get an error when you try to save it. So a project is required. Here's the uh, the pop-up box for projects, which then gives you the ability to see all the projects that are available to select. Want to make sure you click on the abbreviation, because that's where the, the link is at. Uh, the clicking on anything else doesn't work for you, so click on that abbreviation, the project ID to, to select. And here's an example, which Secure went through as well, um, that when we were all active, uh, you can select pay code uh, PTO, and there you select the same for project. And again, just always the pay code's exception, and always make sure that you select project to, to match. And then uh, here's uh, examples entries that Secure walked through again. So we see we have hours entered, store number, project type. It totaled it up for us. We get this little icon here, and all that means they need supervisor approval because they haven't been approved yet. I can approve by clicking on a box here or clicking on approve time card to approve all at once. And again, I always need to save. And here's an example of what happens when the time card is being saved. You get this little box here. 
and when it's done, it'll say done. You click on it. If it recognizes that there's an exception, it'll tell you that there's errors in there and it can't be saved. Sakura, Gene, anything on uh, that? You're doing excellent, Steve. Okay, any questions out there? Steve, this is Ben. Yes, sir. I had a question on the PTO. Your example was different than what Sakura showed us. Could you go back to that slide? Yeah, Sakura, what's different on my example? Although I didn't save it, so I didn't get an error, so because I knew I'd get an error if I saved it. I'm sorry, I missed that question. Uh, ben asked, said that my slide looked different than when you were in there and uh, put in uh, PTO. Under project, you have PTO. She said to put manager only. That was under the unpaid time off, wasn't it? All of them. All of them. Wasn't that for bereavement? Well, that, that was probably a mistake on our end because, yeah. really, PTO it should be the pay code and the project should be PTO. Yeah. It's a good yeah. question. So if we had UTO in the pay code, we'd have a UTO project code, right, Sakura? Yes, that's correct. Um, but bereavement should have the project code manager only. Correct. Yeah, any of those other pay codes would be the manager only. So jury, duty, bereavement, workers' comp, leave, any of those others, right? Correct. And the PTO pay code will have the project PTO. Okay, then I must have misunderstood. Thank you. Yep, no problem. And and folks, when you're in there, you'll see that when you when you select those, the the, the explanation is there, and I think you'll be you'll you'll grasp it. Um, here's an example of the approved time card. So you'll see it says approved here, and then we have check boxes by the approved times, and that's all this example is. Um, then uh, here, just an example of on the home page, the message center. That's this envelope right here. If you have a message, you'll have a number, and uh, it'll tell you where the message is at. And you click on that box. It's either a notification, or it's a task, or it's an alert. In this case, I had a time card exception notice. And I can click on view all messages, or I can go to my team, time and attendance, and click on time card exceptions to find those. And then here's what would pop up, and it tells me I have time card, or tells me I have exceptions, and uh, tells me what the exception is. If I hover it over, it'll give me a message there. And then um, if I click on that, it will take me in to correct that. And Sakura talked about here the legends that gives you a list of icons. Uh, some are just information, and then some are exception notices. But it, it, it's just something, it's there in case you aren't sure what something is, but normally if you highlight over one of the icons, a little pop-up box will uh, come up and tell you what, what the message is. And then here, uh, Sakura went through that as well. Again, this is a, just a slide, so uh, not interactive like hers, but you can get your total summary by selecting uh, total summary, uh, and it'll give you all your totals for every one, all your time cards. Here's an example. Hey, Steve, in OTK, we used to be able to uh, check to see if anybody was missed getting a payroll, a time card payroll. Can we do that in ADP as well? I, I think once reports uh, become live, we'll be, be able to do that. But Sakura can answer that better than I, I think. So um, in OTK, you what would you do to, you mean you would group your time cards together and you'd see missing hours? No, you would see if you if, if a team member was missed altogether. Yeah, once we turn in the report function, um, you should be able to pull reports um, with all your team members and then, you know, you could do, you could filter it any way that you'd like, but you'd be able to do that through reports. Okay, thank you. Sakura, so, what's your expectation on that being turned on a couple weeks or three weeks? That was a good question, Steve. 
Well, one of the things that would happen is someone would inadvertently uh, put their time under the wrong week. And so then it would appear that they're not getting paid for the current week that we're trying to process. And that was the way we caught that. Um, so that was something that was used quite frequently. So the sooner we could turn something on like that would avoid someone not getting paid. But I'm, I'm assuming, Sakura, you'd probably catch it on your end, though, too. Yeah, um, the good thing about ADP is once I lock the time cards, you guys will not be able to enter time in the week previously. And I think that that's where a lot of the issues came in with OTK. Okay. Um, here on temp employee time cards, and pardon me if I kind of really read this, but I want to make sure we go through and we explain it. So. Um, for temp time cards, you know, the we are currently synced up with a deco where um, where everything's going to show up uh, from a deco. But eventually, that will happen. A deco will help us manage that. But you know, for now, we have a, a temporary time card for temp employees where we can put in a total. If we issue a time multiple time cards for every store, as a cost of two fifty per week for that, which can get uh, uh, is a controllable cost that we, we really don't have to spend. So to manage this, we're going to take and have one time card per store for temp initially. And then uh, rather than employee name, it's going to indicate temp. You can enter in up to 24 hours each day on that temp card. It won't allow over 24 hours because from a deco standpoint, you know, they want to get paid for every employee. That's how they, they, they get their, uh, their fees. So they don't allow more than 24 hours per employee. If you're a store that has, uh, on a regular basis, over 24 hours in a single day, then that would create a need for an additional time card. Additional time cards can be added upon request for either a specified period of time or permanently based upon approvals through the market manager and the regional director. They want to, the regional directors want to have some kind of control over that to minimize that expense. Then as the schedule is completed for the upcoming weeks, then uh, the store manager would determine if for temp time for a particular day in the upcoming weeks, they would exceed 24 hours, then they can just send a request for additional time card providing the start date for that additional card and the stop date. So it could be just one week I need it, or it could be I need it for the next four weeks, got a big project going on, or got people on vacation, whatever it may be. You just need that information. And then, uh, Gene, have we determined how we want that request to flow? Can you speak to that for additional temp time cards? Oh, oh. Sure. So the store manager request in the market manager and regional says it's okay, right? Then we can we can go ahead and send that to Jennifer. She'll be the one to manage and add and delete. Is that did I catch that right, Steve? Well, so if I'm a store manager and I know that for the next four weeks I'm going to need an additional temp time card, do I send my request to the market manager or do I send it to Jennifer and copy the market manager and the regional? What should I do? The regionals need to approve it, so we're requesting that they make that request to their mark, copy the market manager in, but the regional needs to approve it, and then the regional, once we get that approval, Jennifer can add that. Okay. So they'll reach out to their market manager first before they reach out to Jennifer? Yes. Okay. Sarah right. has a question. Yep. So, by like, biweekly, if... Um, if we have a home store team that has a lot of temps on it that are working over 24 hours a week, so we just request with our regional manager or our market manager to get that approved biweekly if it happens, I mean, more than one time? Yeah, I mean, if again, if, if you need it on a regular basis, if you need it just on a semi-permanent basis, you know, whatever that need is, um, the intent is, is to supply that, but the intent also is to control that expense because it, it, you know, there's no need to, ex to give every store four temp cards because not every store needs it. So 
um, you know, work with your market manager and your regional. And if it's on a permanent basis, you need two temp cards because you're, you know, there's days when you've got more than 24 hours uh, of temp help, then that's fine. So it's it's whatever your need is. We want to fill that. It's just managing the cost. Okay. Thank you. Yep. You bet. Anybody else? So we can't do more than 24 hours of a deco staff per day. Correct. Okay. Yep. Uh, I was going to say is that not that the the um, you, you can't you can't manage around that, but the system won't allow you to put in more than 24 hours in a single day. Somebody else had a question. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, my question is, um, uh, my store is a home store. Yep. Uh, well, you know, obviously, uh, they use a lot of temps for the home store, and there's, it'll easily go over the 24 hours. Now, are they going to have um, a separate um, temp card for the home store hours? At at this point in time, there's there's no plans to do that. But again, you could. You work through your market manager, and you could request an additional temp time card so you can track that as needed. We're just looking for for approvals to do it. That's all uh, Gina's asking for. So if if the RDs are approving it, then they'll sign the time card. But there, there's not to say there's not a business reason to have additional time cards. Again, it's just controlling that somewhat. So. So if you have a need for it, just reach out to your market manager. Okay. That answer? Yes, thank you very much. Yep. Anybody else? So are we not sending uh, time cards to a deco to uh, Valerie Jackson anymore? Uh, that's that Valerie still needs time cards. This doesn't take away this doesn't pay the a deco employees. All this is recording the hours, so that that all the hours are being charged appropriately for for metric purposes. But this the, entering the employees and AD, employee time into ADP doesn't get an ADECO employee paid. Same as it didn't with Oasis. When we put in temp time in Oasis, it didn't pay the ADECO employees. So Valerie still needs the time. However, you do that in your market and in your region. Okay. All right. And then this here, just kind of wrapping it up. Uh, this, you know, what we're presenting to you is kind of serve you specific on ADP, but there is more information in in ADP. This question mark uh, will uh, bring up some. Uh, uh, options for uh, learning different things. Then clicking on this arrow brings up this learning byte menu, which are little videos. So you, if desired, you could get more information here and drill down a little bit. The information that you're being given um, today and through these these calls are all about kind of the survey specific version of ADP because it's been um, been adopted to kind of fit our needs, so which is what ADP does very well. And then when you're done with ADP, just click log out right up here and uh, and log yourself out. That way, there's no chance of someone getting back into it. And uh, that is it. Any questions? See, I have a question. Uh, throughout the week when I was entering payroll by the day, um, I messed up and deleted a Sunday. And I didn't know how to go back to re-add the day. Like as you delete the columns, I accidentally deleted Sunday's day. And do you have to delete everything and start over? Or is there a way of going back and putting Sunday back in? Um, well, Secure may need to help you there answer that question because normally if you delete all the rows for a particular day when you save it, at least one row comes back. So the, the day never disappears once you save an entry. So if you're not seeing that, then there's something else going on. 
Yeah, that the whole day disappeared, so I just had to delete everything and start fresh. So I was wondering if there was a easier way out. No, if if you delete if you delete a row uh, for a day, if you delete all the rows for a day, that day will go away. But once you click save and it accepts that save, that day comes back and it it will always come back. Okay. So, yes, so that is correct, Steve. Know. That does happen. Okay. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Yep, you bet. You bet. Steve, um, for those that want to hang out and talk, would you do you mind putting the time card up? Uh, what exactly they're asking is basically, you know, when do we put time to resets and what do we put for training and what do we put in the personal downtime? I just wondered if we could pop up the time card and just kind of walk through that again. And then this this information, like what is DSD? We know all that right but it gets into resets and home store and then remodel and refresh and that's really what Jeff Vermeer his, his new like his new rules do we have time to go through that a bit I've got the time sheet up if everyone can see it is this what you're looking for Gina exactly and how on that third tab where it says project category and time rules that's All the time what this I, year? yep I feel like people are just getting familiar with that because it just went out, what, the end of last week? So we had a question, you know, where do I put dairy? Well, dairy now is in food service, I believe, right? Yep. So oh, dairy service right here. I just thought if we could take a, the, a minute and just review this, I think that might be helpful to managers. Yeah, I think, you know, and I'll, I'll leave it up here and we could talk through it, but uh, we're going to post this will be in, uh, Gina will be in HR General, is that where this going to be, the, the spreadsheet's going to be? On AADP website? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In, uh, in MV Tools, it'll be oh, in HR yeah. General, right? And then yeah. ADP will be on the, um, under... I think we can go ahead and post this right on our quick links for a while, right, Steve? That's probably a good, good idea, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be on under quick links. Uh, Gina will have it posted there, and you'll be able to access this. So, you know, we've got the the spreadsheet, which has three tabs. Um, you have the employee timesheet, you have the ADECO daily timesheet, and then the time rules here. Additionally, uh, we'll be posting PDFs of the employee timesheet and the ADECO daily total, which will be easier for you to print um, on a, a regular basis. You need multiple copies, of course. This category and time rules, you probably only need one or two prints and you're good. So DSD continuity, you can see the changes here. KE and Kellogg and Hudsonville have all been added under DSD. The activities associated with it, which um, you're all familiar with. Management tasks, um, the direction is you know, time to schedule, time for meetings, times for calls like this, other non-case or service activity, things that you can't assign to a service or to an implant uh, that as a manager, those are tasks that uh, you're undertaking, then uh, they can go in there. Uh, personal downtime, um, including the breaks, and uh, for those that travel between stores that would go into here. Um, spices, which is a new craft, that's the implant projects only. Then food service, again, as Gina mentioned, uh, dairy service, bread, um, the uh, frozen food service that goes under here. Uh, GM service, nothing really new there. Resets used to be major projects, it's now resets. So large or small, resets will go under here. Home store will have its own header, of course. Remodel refresh, that's as directed. You know, those of you that are going into a remodel refresh, that you know that's you and you'll get that information. New store startup for new stores. And then training, um, that's, you know, really respond to that based upon direction from your market manager. So that's really that. And again, it'll be on the ADP uh, website for you to access. Did, did that answer the questions? Is there anything yes. else? I, I think that's perfect. Do any managers have questions about that? I have a question. 
do the, will the M plans continue to guide us in coding for our employees in the stores? For for the uh, time reporting, is that your question for for recording payroll time? Yeah. When they when when an employee opens an M plan, it'll usually give you know project type and and guide us food service, GM service, correct, et cetera. Correct. Yeah. The yeah. M continue to guide our employees in the stores. Yeah, and we put a note up here. Here, the below is a guide. Uh, for any implant, the structure of the implant will provide final directions where that specific project or task should be assigned. And if you're not seeing it, then you should call out that project manager um, if you don't see it on an implant because their direction has been is that all implants need to give, to give direction to uh, the person undertaking that activity where that time should be charged. So we know That's occasionally awesome. it gets missed, just call them out on it. Steve, Thank you. Uh, Phil, uh, I can tell you right now there's the implants that I've opened up this week just working on different projects that there are several that do not have a project code at the bottom. Yep. So, um, you know, the the implant itself has the initials of who issued that implant. Um, and, you know, reach out to them or let Jeff Ramir know so he can address it. So. Yeah, but they can't edit an implant once it's been issued. Isn't that correct? So when it's when it's live, the information you have is what you have to work with. So they can't go back in and re-edit any of the instructions. I understand that. So what are you asking? I'm just what I'm saying is that that once that implant is live, if there's not the payroll code is not there, then. It's, it's, it's already too late. You can't put the payroll code in after the implant's been issued. So that's where they have to make sure that they get all the stuff coded when they go live. So we have for reps that are hey, completing them see it. Hey, this is George. We brought it up on a meeting uh, with Gary and everything. And, and they're supposed to get, you know, we told them there were a lot that, that aren't getting coded. Uh, my suggestion is to send an email to the project manager that's in charge of that. And they can put out an email to the, all the store managers how to code that if there's nothing out there instead of reissuing a whole end plan with the code on there. So just, uh, you know, make your market manager aware or your regional, and we can take care of it for you so it gets out to the whole company. All right? Thanks, George. Yep. Anybody, anything else? Philip Marsh, that's, that's a good point. I mean, Steve and I, and we can make sure that we bring that up again with Doug and, and team tomorrow, right, Steve? On the on, on the question on the, the implant direction? Yes, yes. And then Doug can talk to, I mean, Jeff Ramirez and like George just said, right? Yeah, and I... It, yeah, so we can bring it up on tomorrow's call. Yeah, it was it was bad this week. It was I know there were a lot. I got a lot of calls on it, so it was bad. And I did talk to to uh, Jeff about it already. So good, thanks, George. Yep. Okay, okay. So I've got one more question. Okay. Okay, I've been on the ADP website and I've clicked on my team, and as of Sunday, I only had one name on there should I not see any names or should they show up under my market manager because I want to make sure everyone's where they're supposed to be so that they get paid on time so Phil this is Gina we our direction was to set the project service folks under to report to a store manager or market manager so they're really underneath the market manager or store manager and then you have the time part of it. So from what we were told to do is that's how it's set up. So technically you wouldn't see people under you, but you'd be able to do the time for those folks. What I'm saying though is like, I, I, I understood that part, but if I want to make sure John Smith is on their list, I so I need to get with the store manager then to make sure that they're loaded up. Right. With their, I, their team. Yes. I, Yes, whoever, whomever that person reports to. Sakura, can you help me with that one? I think Phil should see everybody 
that he's assigned to for time, right? So he can see the people. What he is saying, I want to make sure all my people are assigned to the proper store manager, market manager, to make sure they get paid, right? Um, yes, they should. The manager should be able, I mean, um, I'm sorry. What's the question again, Gina? It's confusing. So Philip Marsh is asking, he's a project service manager. His folks are reporting now directly to a market manager or store manager per Brian, right? So he wants to make sure those people are truly listed under those people to make sure they all get paid correctly. How does he do that? Um, he, I mean, we could assign him, we could assign Philip those employees just for time, but for him to see the org chart, that's, I don't, I don't think we could do that. I mean, unless we open up the org chart for everybody to view. So if he only sees the people in time, he would basically connect with Brian or the market manager to be able to see and make sure its people are signed up properly, right? Right, you're correct. Okay. Does that make sense, Phil? Yeah, I mean, I just, I guess I'll just get with Dean or the store manager, <coughs> excuse me, and make sure that they have the correct people. Right. Thank you. We just wanted to put out there, we think that, um, I don't know who said it yesterday, but the concern was who's going to be available for phone calls if I get stuck on Monday at midnight. So Sakura, Jennifer, and I will be setting up, I think it will come from Sakura on Skype call on Monday. We were just wondering of the managers that are still online, would it be helpful to have two sessions, one in the like late morning at 11 and one at 4 o'clock? We'd like to know what your feedback is. So what we do is just have Skype sessions. We'd be online, be able to answer questions while you're trying to enter time and finalize time. Any feedback on that? Gina, I'm not sure that I followed you there. You're, you're talking about just having an open Skype meeting where people will just jump on and start asking questions? Yeah, instead of, we won't be able to answer phone calls at midnight on Monday. I, I don't know who said that last call. But we will and are able to do Skype calls for all managers. We can set up a Skype call at like 11 o'clock on Monday and 3.30 or 4 on Monday and then just be able to help people that way instead of them trying to get a hold of us on a phone call or email us we were thinking we just try to organize it so managers could be online with us ask their questions we would just answer them we could pull up time cards and show them things so we can get through this payroll and process things accurately yeah it will essentially be like a live interactive um a live interactive call on skype you know if you guys have any issues just or questions just write them down and then we could talk about it and discuss it during the call yeah people We're, send in the questions beforehand and then they jump on that call that probably work yeah we were just trying to make coordinate our effort right we're just trying to be available to answer questions for the managers that are actually entering time on Monday would that help? Is that something you guys are interested in? Yeah, I think that's a great idea, Gene. So that if we have any hang-ups or whatever, I usually do my payroll on Sunday night, so I will have done that. And if I run into any problems, like you said, I don't want to be calling or trying to get a hold of somebody at 8, 9, 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. or So that would give us time during the day to get it all straightened away if need be, either session, and have it done by Monday night. So. Right, right. So, Russell, just to answer, what time would be best for you? I mean, we can do early in the morning, we can do late in the morning, we can do two sessions. See, that's what we're wondering. What would be the best time? We were thinking 11 a.m. and 3.30 or 4 p.m. Yeah, so, I think that sounds great. I think that would work out really well. Okay. So, if does anybody have any other requests or thoughts? We, we, that's what we would like to do. We think it would be helpful. Any other feedback for us? Late well, I, thought we, I thought they said we were entering times daily. 
Why would you we are, need that at the end of the week? Well, it's just really to help if there's any questions at for this first couple of weeks, you know, Amar. So some people are we're gonna be entering daily and now we're we're activating PTO and they didn't have that activated until the end of the day, today or tomorrow. So we just want to be available and coordinate the effort on, you know, answering questions like on Monday morning. Hopefully they have it done, but we might have questions that we can answer as a team. Okay, Kept thanks. Going through exceptions, time card approvals, just the process itself. So I... As Sakura will send out a Skype call, and then if you want to be included, then just accept it at 11 a.m., and we'll do a 3.30, I guess. And then if you're interested in being in on that or have questions, we'll be available, and that would probably be the, you know, the best way to kind of get this all, make everyone feel a little more comfortable that we're doing it accurately so we can get people paid. So we'll plan on 11 and then 3. It looks like the feedback is 3 would be good. So Sakura will send something out, right, Sakura? Yes, I sure will. So thank you, everyone. If if you have any other questions, let us know. Otherwise, huh? She never even told us anything. Oh, we can hear somebody, but hopefully you can turn off your mic for your sake. Okay. If there's no more questions, we can we can end the session. Steve, thank you for driving that <laughs> training. That was helpful. You bet. Thanks. Bye all. Thank you. Nice thank you. Bye everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Secure, are you still on? I am. Can I ask you one quick question? Sure, Mike. It's, um, I can't click on like a project code and enter it. I still have to like type everything in. Do you um, click on that magnifying glass? Yep. I click on that. I click on the more. If I need something down there, when I scroll down and click on it, it will